I want to talk to Clark. I think is our last caller. Maybe we have time for one more, but but let's see how this Clark call goes. Clark is a he and also a him calling from California. And Clark says the mind being immaterial points to the existence of God. Uh, you're on uh, AXP with Seth and Johnny. The mind is immaterial. Yeah, of course. I think it's really hard to reconcile the notion that the mind is reduced to the brain, because if we take the brain and we take the mind or or mental states and hold them in a conceptual analysis, what we can see easily is that one is propositional and one is non-propositional, which means to say that one represents propositional content and the other doesn't. The mind doesn't in virtue of phenomenal experiences not being public. You can't represent them in propositional form. And so in virtue of that, in in virtue of one being propositional, one being non-propositional, you can't show that there's entailment, that there's logical entailment between the two. And if there's no logical entailment, then at best you have to say there's an ontological distinction. So if there's an ontological distinction, then the specific nature of mental states is going to refer to a a proposition that is a second order necessary proposition which i'm saying is an abstract entity that is a modally necessary principle so if there is a modally necessary necessary principle then Mm -hmm. that's going to embed itself in such a way that there's a strong psr the strong principle sufficient reason yes sir and that modally necessary principle is gonna is that's where i make an abductive case and say that it's it's god that there's the that that abductive. Got okay. It. So you're go, go on. Can you repeat what I said? And can you? Can Absolutely you what I not. I uh, what you said is far over my head, um, and and I'm glad that you called when J Mike was here. This is a this is a J Mike type of a call. Um, perhaps I I owe myself a uh, a long conversation with J Mike, but the fact is, you are making a, a quite a simple argument. I think ultimately is that. The mind is immaterial because of all these philosophical reasons. But do you have actual proof that a mind can exist without a body? Yeah, that, that's the argument that the mind the is argument. immaterial. Okay. The brain is well. Yeah, well, the oh. argument is that the the mind is immaterial. But what follows from what I was mm-hmm. saying is that there is nothing physical. It's an argument for idealism. If, if you listen cool. to what I said, it's an argument for idealism. Yeah. Which is going to essentially point towards there, yeah. there being yeah. a. I, I would say you're like talking call, about call, Clark. So that's, you're talking about arguments. I think yeah. what Johnny's talking about is what's your proof. Yeah. You, you've you've yeah. woven a nice the, tapestry of an argument, argument but I'm we need to that. have a. It's a if it's a logical argument. I don't know if it's if it's sound and 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 all that jazz. But uh, you can weave a complex pattern, but I need to see it in reality. I need to see actual real evidence of it i need to test it i need to be able to to uh to match it with the universe that we live in because we can we can weave a complex pattern we can we can make these thought experiments using language to uh to construct these artifices but uh, unless there is a way to actually make that manifest in the real world it's just a bunch of talk now j mike loves this kind of talk and so you should go ahead and call when when J Mike is on the atheist experience. But I will well, flatly tell you, I will tell you flatly quick. right now, tell you, Clark, after I mute you, that that's really, really interesting what you said. It doesn't make much sense to me. Um, and I'll admit that I'm not as well versed in the complex philosoph- philosophical speech as you are. Seth, thoughts? I think. Th- First of all, the the mind brain dualist the the burden of proof remains on the person to demonstrate that the mind is a non physical. It's very Deepak Chopra when you say it that way. But I also recommend the work of a neuroscientist, Dr. Julian Mussolino. He's written an entire book called The Soul Fallacy, and I think the soul relates relates as well to the non physical mind, the person who believed that the mind and the brain are not the same. They are separate things. Consciousness comes from without in this conveniently undetectable and unmeasurable way, right? We've got to have this sort of physics-free, science-free model where nothing has to operate (laughs) in a measurable way 
but it can still be real. But he talks about how that it should be measurable because let's say a soul or an otherworldly mind did affect the physical brain and help to derive, or pardon me, not derive, it helped to drive the processes of thought, of identity, of action, right? Who we are, our souls, our person, if it is a non-physical entity, it still has to funnel itself through the physical entity of the brain. And we should be able to see the reaction of one into the other. So then we realize it does become a physical question. It does become something that we should be able to see in MRI and test for in a lab. And so Dr. Mussolino says, and I agree that actually the soul of the question of the mind or the soul, when people talk about it in these sort of conveniently nebulous terms, it exists, but it doesn't exist kind of thing. Well, no, actually, if it does exist and it informs the physical brain and drives identity, thought, action, well, that's a scientific question, and that should be measurable. And if it's not seen, if it's not measured, if it's not detected, then why would we embrace it? Why would we believe in it? I don't think we do. And I, it's anyway, the book is called The Soul Fallacy. It's fascinating. Really good stuff. It sounds interesting. I'm going to check that out. Yeah. Uh, Clark, we're going to let you go, but... I will offer you this. <laughs> Sounds like you have a very complex understanding of this philosophical question. It sounds like you have an answer. It sounds like you're very convinced. And um, I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you are. I and mean, I don't even mean that sarcastically. I'm not. So why don't you do this? Why don't you write it up? And I will do what I usually do in my job. I will go through it line by line. I will annotate my response. And I will study what you've sent me. And perhaps I'll even talk to J. Mike. I'll talk to some other individuals who are more well versed on this subject. And let's see what we can we can get down to. But you're going to have to send me something like that in writing. And for those folks out there in the audience, whoever hear these kind of arguments from callers or from people in their lives, understand that uh, talking fast, uh, saying a lot of complicated things, um, that's great. But when we are dealing with a very complicated uh, subject, uh, these, these, these complex proofs that they should survive close scrutiny in writing. They do. That's great. If they don't, perhaps it's smoke and mirrors, perhaps not. Um, but yeah, thanks for calling Clark. Um, send that to me in writing. And if you want, you can go ahead and send that to Johnny P at atheist hyphen community.org. That's Johnny P at atheist hyphen community.org in writing. And I will certainly take a look at it.